Welcome back everyone to the race recap. We experienced an exhilarating first sprint race of the season, marking our return to China for the first time since 2019. The drivers on the grid appeared to be acclimating well during the first and only practice session, as many had previous experience on the track. For those who joined the grid post-pandemic, this was their first encounter with the track, including China's hometown hero, Zhou Guanyu. The sprint's commencement closely mirrored the feature race, but qualifying diverged with Parc Ferme opening post-sprint for adjustments. Teams like McLaren capitalised on this, aiming to narrow their championship deficit with Red Bull, while Ferrari also remained a strong contender. The trackside battles were intense in both races, with Ferrari and Alpine vying for positions and Mercedes clashing with McLaren. Meanwhile, Verstappen made a remarkable surge through the grid during the feature race, earning the driver of the day title, despite replacing several parts in his car which initially relegated him to the back of the grid. The season continues to be action-packed with the introduction of sprint races. Teams are giving their all to accumulate points as we approach Miami for the second of six sprint race weekends this year. Welcome back to Miami and welcome to qualifying. Only raw speed will separate these drivers today, but the question is, who's got what it takes to get pole? All right, so here we are for Miami Sprint in Miami Sprint Qualifying as we take that corner. Uh, not very likely to see the back end is coming out. And if you guys can tell, I'm still a little under the weather as we're uh, coming across the line. Good enough to get us into um, Sprint Quality 2 with a 130.7. And now uh, we haven't, we did set a pace of 130.7 for Q2. Currently P13, We're looking to improve on our last run to get into Q3, which we do so uh, quite easily though. P5 for that sprint race uh, quality. And our final run in Q3, it's going to be our first run um, of the session because the time is so, uh, so much shorter. We take a little bit of the curb on the inside, taking this corner a lot better than we did. But um, we could see how we respond to the car trying to kick the back end out. That's not going to be good enough. So it's going to be a P10 start for our sprint race here in Miami. So it's all about speed in today's sprint. Not very many laps and no chance to get ahead on strategy. Who here today has the raw skill to take them to the top? Sitting at the southeastern coast of Florida, the Miami International Autodrome has 19 corners and 3.36 miles of racing. It's a circuit designed to encourage close racing while meeting the highest safety standards. Either way, I'm sure it's one that will please the fans. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Sainz, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Oscar Piastri, Perez, Stroll, Johnson, Hamilton, Gasly, Sonoda, Ricardo, Joe, Bottas, Magnussen, Albon, Sargent, and Nico Hülkenberg rounds off the grid. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. And alongside me in the commentary box, my old friend, Anthony Davidson. Well, they say that a change is as good as a rest, and whilst there's not much rest on show in the sprint format today, there's definitely a change to what we're usually seeing on the track. I know what we've got to do before the start of today's race, but what about our driver? What do the final hours look like for them? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment.
excellent effort on your first home race qualifying. Remember, you have three home races, so stay focused and don't become complacent. Aside from the last corner, the car's setup should be ready for both the sprint and the feature race. We can make any additional tweaks after the race. Here we go then. The formation lap is underway ahead of today's sprint. Almost ready to start the sprint as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. All right, so here we are pulling up to our grid slot here for the sprint race, first home race of the season, one of three between myself and Logan Sargent. So we're starting in P10 next to the Mercedes, I believe is what it was. I uh, skipped forward past the uh, introductions. Yes, P10 there next to Stroll and Hamilton. The five red lights are on. And it's 10 lap sprint here in Miami as we are off. And we're off to an okay start. Perez to a slow start behind us, or ahead of us there. So we're gonna be moving to the outside line, seeing how many positions we can make up as we're eight. Side by side with Stroll, and that's gonna be Piastri just ahead of us in the McLaren. And uh, the back end wanted to come out through this right hander, which we had to be very careful about, especially in practice. We we're trying to fine tune our setup. Uh, we did a late tweak to the uh, front wing to kind of counteract the uh, rear wing through the final corner, but uh, as the tire wear increases throughout the race, we'll have to. Uh, work on it as best as we can. You can see we're already starting to lose pace. Still trying to make a move there on the right side as uh, we did make that front wing adjustment, so it's going to jeopardize our straight line speed. Stroll still holding on to that, and they're going to back out. And Paris and Stroll are fighting side by side as we're coming through this uh, horseshoe, I guess it would be called. I'm not sure what they call it. Coming through this um, really tricky uh, short sector three, like chicane under the overpass to the back straight as uh, come close to the wall not quite enough to uh, come in contact with it as of yet we're still trying to close in on Piatti to see if we're just borderline catching up to them even though it's the first lap of the sprint and uh, if you haven't already noticed we have some special liveries not ours this time it's going to be a Red Bull putting a uh, I think it's a 150 or 50th special Mobile one where it's a dark bronze-ish gold. And then we have the V-Carbs running the uh, Earth livery. And then the Haas running uh, one of the first Haas liveries to go out on Race Department or over TikTok GD. With the, uh, the pink variant of the Haas car. Not much action after the first lap. That's going to be Verstappen here in Sector 1. Taking a DNF. Uh, for another hard part failure, so it's gonna be a rinse and repeat of last time around in China So Verstappen is gonna be taking a uh, grid penalty for the main race We see a train of cars behind us stroll Paris Hamilton and Sonoda We get to see the uh, earth livery on the RB here in a little bit as we're uh, Pushing the car as much as we can trying to stay ahead 2.3 is the gap between myself and the Astrid now up in P7 uh, within the points uh, for the top eight as Stroll and Perez they're looking to try to make a move Stroll makes a move on the inside of us before the horseshoe and here we're on board with Perez You can't really see the gold because it's on the uh, the engine cover behind his head but uh On board with Perez as we're coming through the sector three taking a lot of curb here as We're trying to stay with Stroll and uh, hopefully use the RS to make an overtake on him coming through the final few corners and uh, make a quick glance of the uh, really quick glance there of the Red Bull coming down the back straight and we're up against Hamilton now on the inside giving him the space that he needs not trying to push anybody off track quite yet but that's gonna be it for lap three Perez still makes his way ahead up in the P8 we're back in the P9 and moving on to lap four um, 
later on this next lap. Hamilton on the outside, trying to make a move. Not quite there. They, we uh, we like to break late. Like I believe Daniel Cardo does the same thing. as Joe and Sonoda are behind us. And Hamilton, we take a lot of curb. We hear the contact on the left side. It's going to be a right um, rear left puncture. Not right. A little bit more contact on Hamilton there, as we have a radio in front of him. Come on, man. This guy's being too aggressive. Um, that's not our focus right now, but we will let the stewards know. And uh, not so happy Hamilton there with Toto Wolf responding uh, from our contact through Sector 3, trying to keep the car under control. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing our best to not uh, do that anymore throughout the race of the weekend. As uh, we're still holding off against Hamilton. We're going to be swapping overboard on board with him. He's making a move on the inside this time through Sector 2. <laughs> As he, uh, we give him the space, we're going to stay side by side coming through the horseshoe. You can see how he reacts to us driving the car. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to give him the position. It's a note behind us coming in contact with the wall as well. Trying to make a move on us. But we not quite enough room for them as we come along to the back straight here, halfway through the race. Because Sonoda was trying to look for a move. And that's going to be in Sector 2 where Sonoda's going to make that move on the inside. A more ideal racing line here as we're not giving up without a fight here. Coming out under the billboard, hitting that breaking point, and uh, holding on to that P10 against Sonoda, even though we're out to the point, still holding on to that final point for the sprint race. Two Ferraris leading the race so far, Leclerc and Sainz. Here's we're almost done with lap six. See a better view of the uh, chrome earth livery on the uh, RV, which honestly looks really nice. It looks way better than I expected from uh, on the website. And of course, these livery mods will be in the description below. That way you guys can check them out for your career modes as well. And uh, yeah, so Sonoda putting up a great fight behind us. So we have a little bit of contact there with the wall. You can see how our car moves as the uh, tire wear is getting a little bit more... Um, I'm not sure the word I'm looking for. Uh, unpredictable is the word. Lap 7 now, so I'm making a move again. And that's Joe on the inside as well. So it's a three, partially three wide coming into the left-hander. Joe reacting to us, holding off on that position. We're back in the P11 now, so we're losing out on the position so far right now. Taking a lot of curb. That's going to be a crack limit morning for us here. The first one of the weekend. Uh, other than the uh, contact. Uh, the contact was an obvious one. And that's going to be a yellow flag behind us, which is going to be Logan Sargent, the other American here for home race. And uh, they're going to be out for the sprint race. So that's going to be unfortunate for them. As you can see, the time is increasing between Sargent and Hulkenberg. And then there's the DNF marker as we're uh, moving on to lap 8. So Gasly... In sector one, made a move on us. He's up in the P11. Now we're defending against Magnuson and Joe. Three wide. We're not going to hold up any longer than we need to. Almost coming into contact with our teammate, actually. As we're coming through the horseshoe. And on board with Magnuson, I'm going to say it again. I said it last year. I'm a really big fan of the Ferrari engine in this game, especially with the uh, sound mods, which we plan on using later on. I believe next season or the season after that, season three, uh, in F1. But we're on board with Magnuson trying to make a move on the inside using ERS and DRS. We're using ERS to try to defend. We have the outside line, we have the preferred line, and we're gonna go ahead and use that to our advantage. Some more contact on the wall there as we get a little bit more wear and tear on the uh, right rear. So now both sides on the back end have some damaged tires. And on a lap 9 here, we're still going to be holding on to that position. The pass now behind the V-carb of Yuki Sonoda. And that's going to be outside the points for us, but it's still going to be a decent finish here for a home race. Welcome back to Miami and welcome to qualifying. Only raw speed will separate these drivers today, but the question is, who's got what it takes to get pole?
All right, now on the regular qualifying here in Miami, uh, we tweaked the setup a little bit more, running the soft tires, and uh, you can see how gentle we're trying to be on these soft tires as we're coming across the line. 130.48, original P7. We're gonna be coming out later on the end of qualifying. Uh, currently P17 on the grid for our time. 132 from Jill for P15. And we're down by at least two tenths. That's not going to be enough for us to move on. It'll be a P17 start for the main race. Formula One has arrived in the Sunshine State for spectacular sunsets, gentle breezes, warm waters, and for what will be a fantastic race day here at the Miami International Autodrome. With great opportunities for wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles featuring 19 corners, 3.36 miles long, and expected average speeds of 138 miles an hour, the Miami International Autodrome will be sure to create lots of chances to overtake. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he'll start from pole position and Oscar Piastri completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Russell, Stroll, Gasly, Sonoda, Albon, Sainz, Ricardo, Joe, Hulkenberg, Hamilton, Johnson, Magnussen, Bottas, Verstappen, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Well, it's been a long time since I last worked with you. Good to see you again today, Anthony Davidson. I know what we've got to do before the start of today's race, but what about our driver? What do the final hours look like for them? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. Not a starting position that we want, but we can make the best of it with positions gained. The car's setup should be dialed in quite well for the full race, so we should be close to a top 10 finish. Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? But we'll soon find out. So as all the cars reform the grids, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start. They'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers, ensuring the planned strategies are all in place. Alright, so here we are pulling up to our grid slot once again, back of the grid this time around for the feature race. And uh, the more and more I look at my helmet compared to the car, I really want to have some carbon fiber added to it. We'll have to look at that later on in the season as we are off P16 from the two penalties between Verstappen and Sargent. Verstappen already up in the P18. We're going to be filing in next to Magnussen, or um, uh, Valerie Bottas actually as we're um, holding off on trying to make any moves. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do in sector two as we're uh, on the medium tires. I thought about doing a soft to medium, but that's gonna be too much tire wear for the race. We're gonna be doing a medium to hard, uh, depending on if we get a safety car or not. A little bit of parts flying up, flying around. I'm not sure who that was from up ahead, but uh, Hamilton back in P13 as uh, we're trying to catch up to Daniel Ricardo and Kevin Magnuson. And uh, Verstappen, uh, knowing how fast he is, we're going to 
try and utilize the toe on him to see if we can work our way up the ridge. Because we know he's going to be doing that quite easily. Here's a better angle of the uh, Earth livery on the V-carb. So side by side with Ricardo coming through the horseshoe. And then coming to the underpass section here behind the Haas. So we're up in the P16. That's one position gain so far as we're uh, coming along the back straight. And you can still see we're losing a little bit of time on Magnuson. And we're kind of evenly paced right now. Like the 436, 0.436 uh, difference uh, in the gap. We tried to break late on the inside of Magnuson, but we did move under braking, so I didn't want to try to make the overtake legal. Take a little bit more curb than we wanted there on the left hander. But uh, yeah, not much action on the first lap. Uh, next little bit of action we're actually going to get is lap 5, where we're less than a half second behind Magnuson. Holgenberg and Magnuson are up together. P14, P15, we make a move on the inside of Magnuson, and we're both going to get DRS, so it's going to be a fight down Sector 2, as uh, Verstappen still back in 18, waiting to make some moves here. As, uh, like I said, we're side by side with Magnuson, Holgenberg up ahead. Uh, over a second, so we're going to be holding that inside line, and the uh, Holkenberg is actually held up behind Joe, the hometown hero of last, uh, the last race weekend there in China, as uh, we're trying to make the best of coming through the underpass section, or the overpass section, I don't know what to call it, uh, it's just a really tricky chicane area on the track that is um, very hurtful if you mess up. But 1.4 is the gap. Magnuson trying to make a move on the inside as we get a better perspective of that pink pass livery uh, like we did in the sprint race. Here's a good view of it, which we will be using later on for Coda and Vegas. And you can see the back end trying to slip out even on these medium tires. We're trying to push this car as much as we can as we have moved on to lap 7. We're staffing now, fighting us for position here in P15 since we passed Magnuson. And we're not really gonna fight him. There's a better view of the uh, the gold, the special uh, gold livery for the Red Bull. So we're gonna go ahead and let him pass and do what we were talking about earlier by uh, trying to use Verstappen to uh, gain some positions as best as we can. But there is a little bit of contact here. Is he joking? Trying to run me off track in turn two? He's not a concern. Continue to push through the grid, Max. A little bit of uh, confrontation there from Verstappen, even though we were trying to hold our line. You can see how Verstappen jerked in towards us on the inside of the corner. So uh, we're going to let that slide for now. But Verstappen already on the lap 11, up into P13, just flying. So we're trying to catch up to Hulkenberg and make a move. We move Hulkenberg to the inside line. They move out of the way for us to take that position. They're not gonna fight it. So that's up in the P15 once again for us since uh, that move with Verstappen. And that's bringing us closer to our pit window. So it actually, at the end of lap 13, uh, the gap to Joe has increased to 2.2. So we're just gonna go ahead and come into the pits. But uh, Bottas comes in behind us. So we're hoping for a good stop here. And uh, we started in P15 from the pit windows. And I noticed both McLarens are running P1, P2 right now. Paris P3. So uh, McLaren, there was an update to improve McLaren's performance. And we can definitely see that within China and Miami. Um, as we come out of the pits, uh, P18, Bottas, uh, Verstappen, myself. Bonass and Magnuson coming in for pit stop. I'm not sure who else ahead went in for our first iteration. But we're coming around at the end of lap 14, start of lap 15 to see who else comes in. It's going to be Sergeant Hulkenberg, Joe. I believe Albon did as well, but he got out of the pits uh, before we can uh, jump up. See, the gap is still 7.6, which I believe he went out of the pits. I could be wrong. <coughs> but we're going to come around one more time. This time, actually, on lap 17, taking a lot of curve as we're still trying to get heat into these hard tires. As it looks like Ricardo 
is still in the pits. Hulkenberg, Magnuson, back P18, P19. As you can see, you can hear the drill guns um, of Daniel Ricardo as they're trying to make their way out of the pits. And that's going to be it for our uh, pit windows. And we only gained one position against Valtteri Bottas and Joe Brandu. So, with how the grid looks right now, we're going to go ahead and go to our commentators for today's race. Well, Mark, how is this sprint doubleheader treating you? I'm really enjoying it. There's been plenty of action between the races in China and this weekend in Miami. I'm sure the drivers are happy not to contend with the wet weather either. What we observe as a consistent outcome is the teams maintaining similar positions on the grid as the race progresses. McLaren is leading with both drivers, holding a solid 2.2 second gap between them both as Piastri is left to hold off Alonso in third. Both Mercedes drivers in, uh, in a decent spot, P6 and P7. However, uh, what surprises me the most is Verstappen's ascent through the grid, reminiscent of his last performance in China, likely earning him driver of the day once again post-race. As you mentioned, Mercedes has shown improvement over the last few races. Sainz is currently contending with Hamilton for seventh place. According to the timing charts, both Stroll and Gasly are closely following Verstappen, doing their best to keep up, while Perez is eyeing an opportunity to overtake Alonso for third place. Perez will have an ideal opportunity to overtake in Sector 2, where the Red Bull's DRS dominance continues. However, this hasn't been to Red Bull's liking so far this season, as McLaren has scored enough points in the sprint race to take the lead in the championship. Since we're on the topic of Red Bull, we've managed to get a hold of team principal Christian Horner. Thank you for taking a moment from your time during the race. How has the team been progressing this season compared to last year's? Uh, the team has been doing what they know best. Uh, we've done everything we can uh, to put our drivers on the podium every race. Um, and we are still working hard to uh, make sure that happens I know it's hard for teams when components fail and having to take grid penalties. How has Verstappen been responding to having to take those this early in the season? Uh, it's always a situation that um, teams have to be prepared for and we were more than ready to deal with those uh, penalties um, going into the feature race after the sprint. I know it may be too early to ask, but word is that Perez may not be a part of the team come next season. Does his performance lately have any influence on the decision the team would make later in the season? Uh, the team's um, current focus is to maintain the momentum we built last year. That's exactly what we're doing. Well, Christian, we thank you for your time here. With 10 laps to go, we shift our focus to McLaren who are currently poised for a 1-2 finish. Zach, how has the team been feeling lately about their results? The team has been feeling fantastic. Um, the boys secured enough points in the sprint to uh, take the lead in the constructors' standings against Red Bull, um, which really hyped up the team last night for today's race. This could be uh, Lando's first race win of his career, and, we have Piastri at a distance uh, sufficient to keep anyone at bay, knowing that if they pull through, um, Lando can have that moment, and that's what the team is working towards right now. The fans appear to be enjoying it immensely, and we're optimistic that this season will be outstanding for everyone at McLaren. Thank you for those sentiments as we proceed to another team. Ayao Komatsu of Haas is still seeking improvement since their personal best in Japan, which was the last update we had from them. How has it been? No, this uh, is a, it, uh, it's been satisfactory so to, to a point that uh, pop, pop, uh, um, the team is diligently working both on and off the track. We are developing some upgrades for upcoming for upcoming races, which we believe will assist in enhancing our overall standing in the competition. Both Kevin and Nico have been trying their hardest but feel like they can't get enough out of the cars. Is the team looking at other means to improve in the field other than what is already being worked on? Currently, yeah, there are several ideas under consideration as it is still early in the season. We are investing a significant amount of money into the development of these parts. So if they do not contribute to our overall success, we may explore a range of external options. Well, Ayao, it's always nice to hear from you as one of the new team principals. We hope to see Haas jump to new heights, and we can't wait to hear what plans you have for the team in the future. 
makes me think more and more about how the grid can change later in the season. Current teams, title sponsors, engine suppliers, especially with the 2026 regulations. We will have to keep that in mind for Haas, as it's been quite the weekend here in Miami. Both McLaren drivers still holding on to that one-two as we get back to the race. All right, yeah, so a little bit of a teaser for some uh, mid to late season changes for our teams. Uh, first time hearing Red Bull as um, lap 21, still P14. And uh, we're moving on to lap 25. Nothing has really happened other than some second pit stops. Nothing too important, but we see Carlos Sign is dropping through the grid. I'm going to go over to him, seeing that it's going to be an engine failure coming through the start of Sector 1, end of Sector the restart of sector one and we see Zhou Guan Yu in the background with another DNF another engine failure it's lap 26 I honestly thought uh, it was gonna be too late for a safety car but at this point uh, with the double DNF of Zhou and uh, Carlos Sainz that's gonna pull out a late safety car it's gonna bunch up the front pack of the grid and uh, I don't I thought about coming in the pits for soft tires, but we are outside of the points. I didn't want to uh, risk anything. So there we have Landon Norris, Piastri, Perez, Alonso, Leclerc, Russell, Hamilton, Verstappen. And then I believe Gasly isn't quite part of the pack yet. As we're on uh, halfway through lap 27 under the safety car. It's not going to be the normal safety car animation because we haven't caught up to the pack. Let's see, we're. 13.2 seconds uh, behind Albon, and they're not part of the pack yet. As we're scrolling down through the grid, see there we are. Um, we have the order to catch up to the safety car queue, but we don't have that delta to uh, restrict us. As we're on board with Lando Norris now on lap 27, the safety car is coming in. It's the last ditch effort for the safety car to come in. That'll be the two laps of racing, and the final lap will have DRS. But that is Pierre Gasly up in P9 uh, within points ahead of Stroll behind Verstappen. Uh, so it'll be Gasly hoping to score points for our team uh, today with the sprint race. You see the safety car coming in there on the bottom left. And the race will resume. We're going to be paying attention to them here for a while as Norris and Piastri are leading the restart of this race at 28 to 29. So two laps to go here. Hamilton versus Verstappen coming through turns one and two. Verstappen really being aggressive on that restart. And it turns out nobody actually came into the pits as Hamilton loses out on that position against Verstappen. Uh, Verstappen, P7. Gasly still P9 against Stroll. We're on board with myself now this time. You can see the gap forming. But we're going to be moving back over to Pierre Gasly on the final lap coming through the um the overpass section here in sector three and uh, hoping to try and make that position up against the person ahead it's going to be i believe george russell up ahead he's going to have drs but it's this last ditch effort push that's going to decide whether or not he's going to finish in a decent position and that's not going to be enough so that's going to be pierre gasly finishing i believe in p9 or p10 uh, to score some points for himself and the team. And um, as he crosses the finish line, we're actually going to be going over to the highlight for the race. Because the uh, ending cinematic, um, as soon as it got to, it showcased McLaren because they won. But as soon as it got to their pit crew, uh, the game froze. I had already uh, raced this race twice because the game crashed halfway through the first race. So that's going to be McLaren 1-2, and I believe that's Lando Norris win here in Miami. But even though we have the complications, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.